Hello, Twitch is in con here with another video coming to answer some of your questions as well as to talk about the winner of the Incon Socks giveaway as well as our next giveaway, which I think is one of the coolest ones that we've done yet. It's going to be $100 in value, but that's not the point. So let's continue onward to some of our questions that you guys asked me last week. So, Inside Man asked the first question. Incon, can you please shave that neck beard thing? Man. <laughs> Man. Whatever, dude. I, fine, whatever. I guess I will, or did, or have. Whatever, man. Anyway, the first real question. Ivan Graciano asks, would you ever go shell on a jungler? So, as a jungler, you basically have a couple options. If you're going to start off with Hog as your first active, which on some junglers you can get away with, depending on the enemy's team composition, how much CC they have. If you do that, that means you have to get beads as your second active, right? You have no option. If you get hog first, you have to have beads as your second active. That's it. That's end of story. But if you start level one with beads, you have quite a few options you can go into to second active. Um, you're going to see a lot of team fight actives come out of uh, that second active slot. Uh, quite commonly, sprint is getting picked up. Um, as well as meditation. Both of those are really popular. So yes, you could get shell. Most of the time you're going to want it on your Guardian, but you could pick it up on your jungler assuming your first active is Beads. Next up we got Julian Hatch, who in a relevant question asks, how do you pop Shell correctly? So Shell is an active where it's a pretty short time period, right? Five seconds, but those five seconds can be extremely, extremely impactful. So you have to make sure that you're utilizing Shell correctly. So when do you pop it? You do not use Shell when you initiate a fight, okay? You should not be popping shell and then jumping in. That's not what you should do. You should jump in, use an ability, and then you shell, right? You want to have your shell active for the majority of the burst damage, which is gonna be give or take like two to three seconds after whoever initiates initiates, right? If they have like a Blink Sylvanas ult on you, you're gonna wanna shell right away because they're probably gonna follow it up with a Vulcan ult, a Kraken, whatever, right? Ryzen ult. Whatever. So if they initiate on you, you shell immediately because you know the follow-up is coming. If you're initiating on the enemy team, wait two to three seconds for them to regroup and attack back on you. And that way you can utilize the most damage reduction out of your five seconds. Of course, if you have uh, the item which increases your duration by 50%, you'll have a seven and a half second shell, which gives you a little bit more leeway uh, on using your shell uh, in the wrong time. Matt Jones asks us, would you recommend using different key bindings from what's default in Smite? Um, it all depends on what is your comfort level. So one thing that's gonna matter is your hand size. So hand size is actually a pretty big indication of what your key binding is gonna wanna be. If you've got huge hands, you don't want like your key bindings to be things like, you know, like X and C because you're not gonna be able to get your fingers down there, your hands are too big, you know, everything's too clumped. You're gonna want things to be a little bit farther away. For me, I use all of my abilities on my mouse. I've got a Razer Naga, but it being not sponsored, just use it because I like it. Um, and I use all of my abilities on my mouse uh, for the most part. That's easy for me. I just, my thumb fits right there, but being bada boom. I don't have to use my movement hand so I can properly juke while playing. Um, but I use my actives with my thumb. So I use C and V because that's where my thumb rests just naturally on my hand when I'm using a keyboard. So you're gonna wanna just change it to the way that your hand fits basically is what I'm saying. So if you have a mouse that has buttons on it, I'd recommend utilizing them. I think it's, it makes everything so much easier. Um, or you know, you can pull a shing and you just use the numpad with your hands backward like this because for some reason that's the way that he naturally plays on a keyboard for whatever reason. <laughs> the lag guy too asks us, would a movement speed build slash tank build work on anybody? Not really. Um, you're not really combining movement speed with tank items. The, the exception, notable exception is wing blade. Um, it's always a good pickup basically. It gives you 10% movement speed, 300 HP, bunch of other good stats, and of course the passive which stops slows. 
it's going to be a great item basically no matter what you're on. Every team has slows because like over like 70% of the gods in the game have slows in their kit or something. At least one slow. So it's always a good pickup. It gives you the HP. So if you're going to pick up a movement speed slash tank item, it's going to be your wing blade. But for the most part, I mean, you're never getting Fatalis. Um, the new blade is pretty good, but you're not going to get that blade and wing blade at the same time. So you're not going to be getting tri movement speed with boots and stuff. So at the most, you're basically picking up two movement speed items. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing any more than that. The only way you can get away from that is if you didn't pick up boots and then you grabbed both the blades for 20% movement speed. But then that's going to be a whole other thing and how you get your timings. And that'll be a whole other thing. So for the most part, no, but yes for wing blade. There you go. So, what you guys really want to be talking about, right, is our winner of the previous giveaway, uh, which was our signed Incon limited edition socks, which are no longer on sale. If you didn't get them, you missed the opportunity. They are gone. They are shipping, so they should be coming to you guys in the next week or two by the time they get shipped out and sent across the world, wherever you may be living. But the winner of our sock giveaway was Eric Gutierrez. So, congratulations to you, my friend. On winning that giveaway make sure you check your email so I can get the socks sent to the correct address and as far as our giveaway for this week guys I think it's a sweet one we're going to be giving away five battle right codes for steam five battle right codes the game is twenty dollars we're gonna be giving away five of them and that's not all wait there's more it's also a sham wow no no sham wow but we're also gonna be pairing that five times battle right giveaway with five exclusive mounts. If you win the copy of the game, you're also gonna get a in-game exclusive item that you cannot buy in the game. The only way to get it, is to get it is through giveaways. So we will be having five winners for this next one, guys, getting a copy of the game, plus the exclusive mount for the game, Battle Right. If you don't know what Battle Right is, I play it a lot on stream right now. I'm putting up YouTube videos about it. The game is amazing, super hardcore PVP, fast paced action, all good stuff. I love it. I'm not even paid to say that. I just love the damn game. So make sure you check it out, even if you don't win, because it's a fun game, and you, I mean, you want to have fun. So thank you, everybody, for watching the video. Don't forget to enter into the giveaway down below. It'll be right there in the description. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment asking a question, and it might just be answered in our next video. And as always, have a twitching day, y'all. It's the final countdown. Ba -da -ba -boo. Ba -da -ba -ba -boo. The final countdown! <laughs>